Hello, I'm Bill Valerio and I run Woodmere Art Museum where we tell the stories of Philadelphia's art and artists. Jazz is an art form we are dedicated to presenting at Woodmere and this short video is part of a series that will capture highlights from the outdoor jazz concerts we presented with Warren Ori and the Arpeggio Jazz Ensemble on the front lawn of Woodmere in the fall of 2020. Everyone brought their own lawn chairs, set them up six feet apart, brought a picnic basket or a glass of wine, and with masks and social distance, had a great time. We are calling this series of videos Jazz from the Art. And so please be on the lookout every Saturday. We will release a new video on Woodmere's website, send a link through social media, and send reminders in our bi-weekly newsletters. Our intention is to build excitement for the new series of outdoor Saturday night jazz concerts that will be resuming this coming spring starting in May. We are making these videos with the sole purpose of sharing the beauty and staying in touch. However, we encourage that if you are in a position to support jazz at Woodmere, please become a member, renew your membership, or make a donation at woodmereartmuseum.org and click on the donate button in the upper right of the homepage. So Warren, it's great to be here with you and we're going to talk about a musician that I've really come to love so much and that's Will Wright, the trumpet mm. player that you work with frequently. Oh yeah. And um, he's somebody who brings a kind of youthful innocence yes. to his trumpet playing and I don't think a trumpet is being youthful and innocent right. but he's got that something very particular he brings to it yeah. that I love every time and this piece Sidewinder you know I'd love to talk about it in terms of its time period you know the 1950s which is the show that we have mm -hmm. on view um, you know right now at Woodmere. Well but, the, the yeah. composer of the tune uh, definitely fits that 50s mood Lee Morgan. Yeah, Lee Morgan, <laughs> yeah. that's right. Yeah. Lee Morgan, a Philadelphia guy, yeah. Lee Morgan. And he was coming into the music scene at a time when it was called more hard bop as opposed to bebop. Huh. Where bebop was, was more of a, it alienated some people because huh. it was just too fast, too quick, too, too jazzy for some people. But be, a hard bop, made it more accessible because it, it gave people the opportunity to tap their feet with that 4-4, but it still had that funky soul mm. feeling about it. And, you know, the saying goes, of course, Lee Morgan wrote so many tunes, but the saying yeah. goes when he wrote Sidewinder as an anti-bebop thing, that's when huh. he bought his Cadillac and paid for his house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's when he really made it. You know, I, I have this feeling sometimes people say, well, man, he sold out. And I say, well, there's two ways you can look at that. You can say he sold out or his records sold out. And what's wrong with that? Yeah. You know what I mean? So the thing is that music is organic. It grows. You can't just keep it in one little box. And so it burst out onto the scene. And Sidewinder not only increased Lee's income, but it also increased his audience. There were people now going to check out Lee Morgan who would never have checked him out before when he was playing something that they felt was a little more abstract. And Cy Winder, though, as a jazz musician, I don't even know if I like to say I'm a jazz musician. I'm a musician, <laughs> yeah. you know. I just love yeah. jazz, yeah. you know. But You have a it, jazz approach. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And, and it's just so great to play because, that again, that bass line, boom, 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 boom. I mean, it's steady throughout. And then you get the right people. You get Will Wright and Larry Price playing the head of that tune. Mm. Oh, it feels so good. It feels so good. And then, of course, Adam Falk was on that, laying down those chords, and G. Calvin Weston yeah. on the drums. So the tune Sidewinder says a lot. You know, the Sidewinder, of course, we know as that snake, that rattlesnake hmm. that really can do you some harm. But when Lee wrote the tune, he was saying he wasn't thinking of a rattlesnake. 
He wasn't thinking of a particular individual. He was just thinking of the approach sometimes that you must take in life, that you can't always go straight up through the front, that you have to go kind of on that side like mm. that snake does. And it, it makes for a, a true statement because, again, doors opened up for him with a growing an audience. And that's very important. It's, it, and in jazz, it's a hard thing to do without, again, if you're concerned about people saying, oh, you're a sellout, you're this, you're that, you're that. I mean, it's not always about that. It's about just growing your music. Growing your music, you want to take it somewhere else. I mean, how many great musicians did that? Miles Davis, one of the greatest of all time. By the time he passed, he was on this rap guy's CD. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. so it's, it's something that you have to do. You have to grow to do. And Will Wright, you speaking of growing and being a great musician, when I met Will Wright, he was working at the Clef Club, mainly handling lights, doing sort of like duties around the Clef uh -huh. Club. Huh. And then somebody said, oh man, you know, he plays trumpet. And I was like, yeah, okay, all right, cool, sure. And then I heard one day, I went in there, I heard this boop, I said, who's that? They said, man, that's Will. I said, what? Yeah. Then they said, but he's really a piano player. I huh. said, what? Wow. And one day here, I don't know if you were here at the show that he did here, one day we were doing a show on a trumpet player, but then at some point he went over to the piano and sat down, now dig this, he had the trumpet in one hand and played the piano with the other hand, wow. and it sounded like he had four hands. Because <laughs> he didn't miss, you know, you would think something would be missing from one of them. He didn't miss a thing with that trumpet, wow. he didn't miss a thing, and the audience went crazy. And we didn't know he was going to do it. <laughs> and I'm like, man, what are you doing? And he's like, pop a thing, bloop. Oh, that was great. So Will is a great asset to the group, yeah. and his youth, helps me technologically because I'm trying, you know, sometimes I say, well, Will, I'll send you this video. He say, man, just take a picture of it on your phone yeah. and give it to me, you know? So yeah. he's, he's a big asset to the group. And, and as Lee Morgan was yeah. and still is a big asset to jazz music. And of course, Lee had some great teachers. Art Blakey, he was in his group for a long time. He worked with Dizzy Gillespie when he was 17 huh. years old. Wow. So he had a lot of good schooling, not from the brick and mortar schools, but from the schools of being out there on the stage with some great artists. So we were very pleased to present this clip, Sidewinder. Check it out. It's a beautiful clip. Thank you. Thank you.
that sidewinder. <laughs>